everyone. Today is going to be a different video. We are not going anywhere. We're staying home. And I'm going to show you how to make my delicious empanadas. Da -da -da -da. And I'm going to drink some vino while I'm cooking. So it's going to be a little bit strange, maybe, the video. So what I'm going to be making today is my delicious empanadas uruguayas. Because every time I make them, everybody asks me, how do you make the empanadas? And I don't know if it's a question because they are curious, they actually want to know, or they love them and they just want to eat them. Dum, 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 dum. So basically what I, I'm going to make today is the basic one. It's the meat empanadas. What I need is um, ground beef. Right now I have six pounds of ground beef. I bought it at Walmart. Um, I have no preference on where I buy it. All I know is that I always look for the lean ground beef. Okay, I don't want extra lean. I want lean. Also, I need lots of onions. I started cutting them. I need lots of onions. I need more onions than meat. The reason why is because the onions make it juicy. The onions make the flavor. It's, it's the best part of the empanada. Even though it's meat empanada, it's mostly onion empanada. Also, what we need is one red pepper and one green pepper. Okay, this can move over there. I love this. Uh, Sazon Goya Azafran. Every time I cook, I use this one. We're going to use one pack. It's a bunch of packs in there. I'm going to use one pack in there for some flavor. Of course, salt and pepper. I got chimichurri um, condiments. But I also, if you don't have that, you could also use the Italiano um, condiment. Um, it's really good. So basically the same thing. A lot of Uruguayans are going to say, why am I using this? You know what? I'm married to an Ecuadorian. Okay? And in Ecuador, they use cube. Okay? Now, I'm going to use a bit of cube. I know. I know, I know, I know. I'm not supposed to. But, it gives it more flavor. And it's going to be a little bit. You, you, hardly, you hardly taste it. But it's good. I, I like a little bit of cube. Now, when, you, when I mix it all up, which I'm going to show you later on, what I also need is huevo duro. I already um, have it ready. I just need to peel it and cut it up. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna stuff them later. And also, huevo duro is, sorry, like hard boiled egg. That's what I'm also gonna put inside the empanada. And also, I use some olives to put in the empanada. A little bit. And I like using this one more than the ones that you buy at the supermarkets that you you scoop out and everything because this is not as salty as that one and not as um, strong of a flavor. That's why I use this one because I don't like it when it overpowers into the empanada. I don't like that. But it, it's good. It's good to have a, a little bit at least of this. Yeah. Not everybody likes it. If you don't like it, don't put it in. It's, it's your preference. This is how I'm going to make it. And I hope you guys enjoy watching me make las empanadas. Also, what I'm going to be using in the empanadas is the famous tapas. I'm not going to be a, like a grand chef and making la masa or the dough to make the empanadas. I'm sorry. I'm not that dedicated. An easier way of doing it is buying them. I buy these ones, Romina. Um, they're called Disco de Empanadas. Okay, they're discs of the empanadas. What I do, I use these. They come in 12, so you can probably buy them in any um, Spanish store, any supermarket in a Spanish area. Also, I got them close by in a uh, Asian supermarket. You can probably find it there. I prefer using these because it's too much. I don't know. I've never tried actually making the masa. I'm sorry. I'm not that dedicated as I said before. <laughs> but the main part is the inside of the empanada. And that's the amazing part. That's the flavor. That's where the flavor goes. And these ones are pretty good. I've used them a few times already. And they cook well in the oven and it's 
It's pretty good. I love it. While I'm cutting these onions, I didn't really specify how much onions. I do only said how, like, you need a lot of onions. Basically, um, I put uh, per pound three onions of these size. Now. I have six pounds a, of uh, beef, um, and I would need probably eight, 18, 18 onions, right? But I counted how many onions I have in these packs, these three packs. I have 21, so basically I'm going to put it, put all of them. Um, as long as it's more onions than beef, and not too much onions, don't put like so much, but I mean... <laughs> It has to be juicy and at the beginning it's gonna look like oh my god that's a lot of onions but remember they're gonna like um, decrease in size and they're gonna be more like juicy they're gonna dissolve so they're gonna dissolve yes they're gonna dissolve and uh, you it won't be as much as you thought it was so don't worry if it's if you think it's too much onions because it's happened to me a few times I'm like oh my god there's so much onions but then um, it decreases in size. Also, while I, I cook, I like to listen to my Uruguayan folklore or Uruguayan music. Why? Because, I don't know, it, it inspires me in cooking. Because I'm not there in Uruguay, um, but I still feel like I'm part of the culture, even though I live most of my life here, um, it also reminds me of times when I'm with my dad. As you can see, my dad is a little bit crazy from my other video. <laughs> Freedom City. Freedom City. Um, he's funny. He always uh, makes jokes and makes me laugh. We have a great relationship and uh, I just wanted to give a shout out to my dad. Love you. I have a question, how many, uh, how many empanadas are you making? Okay, empanadas. Basically, I think I'm going to make, there's one, there's uh, 48 here. I have one more in the fridge just in case if I have too much um, meat. Uh, meat. Um, I think it'll be enough, but I don't know. Give or take, it's going to be like 48, maybe 12 more. Like a party size? Or? Party size. Usually when I make empanadas, it is for a party because... It is a lot of work. Not a lot of work. It's just I don't know. you don't have time. To, I don't, you don't have time to make it. It's you just, more, you it's just more, have to make dinner. That's it. Yeah, yeah. It's more. Oops. It's more. Oops. <laughs> I drink my one. Mmm. <laughs> oh, this is good. It's um. I've had it in a fridge for a little bit. <laughs> it's a sangria. All right. So. I've cut the onions. He compared <laughs> the meat to the onions. Holy this is a bigger yeah. bowl than this. It's a bigger and it's higher. So hopefully it's enough. I'm, I'm kind of worried that's not enough, but I'm, I'm uh, whatever. You know what? I don't care. Anymore. And I also chopped up some green pepper and red pepper. Don't worry about how thin the onions and the stuff is. You know, it doesn't have to be a perfect cut. Um, again, because it will reduce in size um, when it's cooking. This is my trick, what I do, okay? Um, people usually maybe uh, cook everything together. I don't. I like to cook my meat first. I want to make sure it's well cooked. I don't want no tummy aches, no diarrhea, no nothing. I don't have a big pan for everything, okay? I don't have a ginormous pan. So, basically, I'm going to be dividing these two things in two. The meat I'm going to be cooking here for now, but then eventually you'll see there's going to be two pans cooking the stuffing at the same time because it won't, it won't fit in one. Which is fine as long as it tastes the same and then after at the end I'll, I'll mix it up. So I think it's ready and hot because I see some smoke. Okay, I put some uh, vegetable oil, oil in there. I like vegetable oil. oil. Um, you can use any other oil if you want. So I like it because I, don't know. I just I'm used to cooking with it. Don't worry about getting your hands dirty. You just wash them after. It's a lot of meat. Lots of meat. 
He sees me inside my uh, my little helper on the floor over here, in case if any of it falls, is ready and willing to clean it up. That's actually a lot of me, holy. It is a lot. Wow, so nice, so much meat. Basically, I'm gonna stir a little. It's gonna reduce as well. Um, I'm gonna put a little bit of salt because I want some flavor coming out of it already. Did you hit it? Okay. And a little bit of pepper. Pepper comes in. Um, and then once I finished cooking it, like fully when I see it brown and stuff, I don't want the extra uh, fattiness in there. Um, I want it nice and, oh, let's see, so much meat it comes up. I don't want it too fatty. So what I do, I put it in, in the strainer. I'm going to put it in here, so let it drain, the extra stuff. And then I start cooking the onions with the peppers and all the other good stuff in there. And then I add the meat again. So as you can see, um, it, the meat is almost done. It, the redness has come out. But see all the, the extra fatness in there? I don't want that. So right now I'm going to see if I strain it. Try. Okay. And it reduced in size as well. See, it's not as much as before. We drain the meat. Now we're Is going. Is it supposed to be on? Yeah. Because it's still on. Oh. We're, we're using both because I don't think I'll have room for just one for this um, amount of onions. You agree? A life hack. Yeah. Half of the onions are gonna go in here. My hands are fully washed. I washed them. Not very much to me, I washed my hands. Now I'm gonna put the rest of here. You hear it sizzle. When I have it on high to medium heat. Half. 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 We need a quality here. The quality. Half, half. Maybe more in one ear than the other, but you know what? I eyed it, so. You know, it is what it is. It starts reducing, I forgot to mention before, we need some garlic. How could you have empanadas without garlic? How could you? So I chopped up some like five, six uh, garlic cloves. You can't put it at the beginning. As you all know, the garlic, it burns easily. So... When are you putting the garlic? In a little bit. Once I reduce it a little more. So I'm gonna put one half half of the powder, see? And then it comes in these little things. Because you know azafran is more expensive. This is like a flavored type of azafran. Since I already have this open, I'm gonna put some of this. Italiano. Italiano. 
put salt in a bit. Lots of onions. My house smells like onions. Right, Gigi? Yeah, it's like hurting my head and my eyes. So, um, I put in the garlic already. Um, it's in there. See how it's reducing and juicing up the onions, as you all know. Um, now, uh, what I'm going to do is put some salt. Because I forgot to put it. I'm going to put the meat in. Again, I'm going to do the life hack. <laughs> the life hack. It's a little bit hot, but... Okay, so half of the meat is going to see how uh, much more onions there are than meat. Alright. I'm sweating. You can tell you're sweating. Could be the wine. Oh uh, no, I think it's because like you're like standing right in front of this and like it's like let's simple. Don't do that. Camera. It's waterproof. Don't worry about it. That's not steam proof. I put it on that side, now I'm gonna put the rest in here. Dump it all. Wow, so nice. But this is not the finished product. I know. See when it's almost done. It looks all right now. It looks all right right now. Yeah, put these condiments for now. Um, oh, and I have to put a little bit of comino. Start trying it. This you is comino, to, right? You have to keep trying it um, to see if it's at your part. Um, it has to be flavorful. I need to give it a lot of flavor, but you still have to make sure. No flavor for the empanadas, the delicious empanadas you're going to eat. And I hope you guys try it. I hope you do. And and I want you guys to comment if you do try it, um, making this, or if you have, I don't know, tips on how to um, do it better. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. This is how we do it. Um, let me know. Comment down at the below. I don't know. No, 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 no. Comment down below. Comment down below. Comment down below if uh, your empanadas that you tried from my mom's recipe, if it turned out good. You know, I hope they do turn out good and I hope you do try it because I, I, I really want to know if people like... Like my mom's like recipe. My recipe. Another thing you need to, to have to make empanadas, you need to have the passion and the love. You gotta, you gotta add See, a love little bit to of it. comino. Not too much, a little, a little. Some people that <laughs> use it a lot in the meat and it overpowers the meat. I don't like it like that. Like I who? Like, like who? I don't, I'm not saying. Should I wait? Should I like turn it off? Okay, so I've been letting it rest for a bit in there. Um, simmer actually. I put it in a uh, low volume. Um, so it just keeps cooking and cooking and grabbing the juice juices in there. Um, it takes a, a little bit of time to actually get it to the consistency that you actually want it to get. It has to be very but remember, don't forget to stir. Keep stirring. So it'll get to it grabs everything so then nothing stays at the bottom. Like, it doesn't burn or anything. But it's at a low heat, so nothing's gonna happen. But it's good to keep stirring and grabbing all the flavor. And then also another trick I'm gonna do is um, later, I'm gonna put uh, one raw egg in here. Set a more, another flavor as well. I do that, so I'm not sure if everybody does that. I do it because it gives it more um, juiciness as well. And why not? Right? Okay, so now, as you can see, it has reduced a bit. So what I'm gonna do is, instead of using both pan stone, I'm just going to uh, 
transfer everything to the bigger pan. Um, I think it'll be easier now to maneuver them, maneuver the meat. Um, and it's smelling really good. I just have to taste it once I transfer everything and then I'll be ready to taste and to uh, put the egg in. Yes, I'm using a metal spoon. I don't have a... I'm not scratching my pan, don't worry. Some of you chefs out there. I'm not a professional chef. <laughs> I just love making empanadas. So as you can see, I uh, transferred everything here and see how it fits perfectly. Um, it did reduce, as I told you before, it reduced a lot. So now it's fine. See, it's like more onions than meat. But it, look at all the juice. That's juiciness. Mmm. Smells so good. Alright, so now what I'm gonna do is grab an egg. Make a little hole in the middle. And just put the egg in there. Stir it around a little. And that's going to create more flavor for the delicious empanadas. So as you can see, I'm stirring it in. You can see a little bit of the egg in there. Okay, so I'm going to try it, see how it tastes. I think it needs more salt. It needs something else too, I don't know. I'm just going to put stuff on it. A bit more salt, oh my god, it's sal, la sal, la sal. I'm going to put maybe more um, the Italiano herbs, more of that, just put it all in, see, more of that, it's all done, the little bit I had, it's gone, um, it gives it flavor, and I'm probably going to put more pepper in it, it's a neat flavor, and needs to say, Oh, Alicia made these empanadas, they're so good. It's not hard to make. All you need are like these simple ingredients and you just need time because it does take a bit of time to, to um, cook. Like one of those, you know, Sundays or, or Saturday or even fr today's Friday. One of those days to just, you know what, I feel like making empanadas. And sometimes it's easy just to go to the store and find them, you know, you know, those bakeries, the Uruguayan, Argentinian bakeries. Um, but, you know, if you know how to make them, and I'm showing you how, why not try? And uh, you put your own spices in there. Um, try your own condiments. Try playing around with the flavor, you know. And uh, it'll be different, and maybe it'll be better than mine. All right, so I think it's, it's done, the filling. I'm just gonna keep it covered uh, for a little bit, simmering, just to grab more flavor. Uh, I tried it again, I think it's um, right on. So I'm gonna just keep it covered, and then after once, you know, maybe 10 more minutes covered, to just let it cool down and actually make the empanadas, make the, the filling, because I don't want to burn myself if it's burning hot. And then I'll show you how I make my empanadas. After three hours of chopping onions. <laughs> so we let this cool down. As you can see, this is how it looks like right now. It's all ready and ready to for the stuffing of the empanadas. What I did in the meantime also was chop some uh, hard boiled egg 
I chop some, I left some aside just in case if I don't need it. Um, and then I also chopped in half the olives that I had in here. Um, so it's ready to be stuffed. I also turned on the oven. I set it for uh, 350 degrees. It's, it's heating up right now. So this is what I do. So I have las tapas. So I have, I take one of these and I don't like it too thick. I find it, it's harder to maneuver. So what I do is I flatten it out and I make it a little bit bigger so it's, so it's easier to, to work with. They come frozen, by the way, these ones. So you have to let it thaw. So what I do now, is that I put one spoon, one scoop, tablespoon, okay, and I put it right in the middle, okay, and then I get a little piece of egg, These pieces are kind of big, but it's okay, and then I'll get one of the olives on the side, like that, boom, 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 and also what I should have done, I just need a little bit of water for the sides so they would stick. You can grab your finger and you go like that and then you fold over like so and you squish the sides like so and you create a little patty. Now this is how I do it okay to make it nice and fancy I fold the side right here. Other people make it differently. And what I do is I push it down like that. I grab another piece and I push it down. I push it down. It's quite easy. Some people have another trick of doing it. Um, this is how I do it. It's easier for me. Okay. And there is one in banana. And I also have a cookie sheet all set up. I put some parchment paper on here. It's easier so it won't stick on the cookie sheet. I find it sometimes if even if you use um, foil paper or wax paper, it, it tends to stick on there. So I use parchment paper. I like it more. So I'm doing another one. I'll show you another one. One scoop and one. Another piece of egg, put it on the side, and then some water so it's easier to stick. Other people also can, if you can't do the that type of thing, um, people also like with a the fork, they press down. And make it like a design with a fork if you can't do that but it's not too hard to do this one all you need is your thumb like that pretty easy easy peasy and I find doing this it won't like the um, the meat won't come out. So now I finished one batch of uh, preparing one batch a, of um, empanaditas that fit in the cookie sheet. So now what we also want to do is I got two eggs, two full eggs. Um, people like to use just the, the yolk, but I use the whole egg. Why, why uh, waste, waste an egg? What you want to do is get a brush, cooking brush, and you just Spread it. This will give it a nice golden look to the empanadas. I know you're, you're probably saying oh, that's a lot of onions and a lot of egg. But that's how it is. And they get so delicious once they're done. You, of course you have to leave them to cool down but it's delicious. Also if uh, you do a lot and it's too like maybe you don't do it for a party and you just do it for the house, you can also freeze them. 
I found that um, I took a batch to my friend's house once, and we weren't able to um, eat them all. She, she, I told her to keep them, and what she did was she froze them, and she would heat them up over time, and uh, they were still good. So that's an option for you guys if it's not for a party and you just want to do it for like you know a snack. You can cook them and then after freeze them up once they're done. So what we do is put it at the bottom, this one, and I usually uh, 350 like I said before and I'm going to set it for 20 minutes. Um, usually I'll keep it for 20 minutes, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how, how long it should stay. Sometimes I keep it for a little bit longer, I open it, I look, it has to be nice and toasted. I'll show you in a bit, once it's done, how it's supposed to look. And there's my dog waiting for me to give him some meat, which I'm not going to give him. Right cheeks? No, I cannot touch you right now. So I'm just going to continue making batches. That's basically what I have to do now. Um, here's another cookie sheet that I have ready, and I just have to continue making more. High five! You want it? You want it? High five. Good boy. Okay, so it looks like it's been 20 minutes for the bottom. Um, they look toasted, but they're not, I don't think they're quite yet ready. See, they're toasted a little, but they're still kind of pale looking. So what I'm going to do is just turn it like this and maybe wait another five, six minutes more. I'll set it. The other, the top I I just put in, um, the bottom is the first batch. So I'm going to put maybe five more minutes. Um, okay, and then we'll check it again. Okay, so we're checking the empanadas again. Oh, look at them. They're amazing. Look at them. They're nice and toasted. I think they're perfect. There they go. Nice and toasted, nice and brown. Not too dark, not too light. I have this ready so I can put these in here. Um, while they cool because I have another batch that I made over here That are ready to go in the oven as well. So we I finished the empanadas Yay, I'm happy um, And and it's an explosion in this house of empanadas In total, how many empanadas did I make? <laughs> 57 empanadas in total Six pounds of meat and a lot of onions And now I would like to ask my husband, my wonderful husband over here Finally, I'm gonna to get to eat one. He's finally gonna to get to eat one. Okay. <laughs> you good? Nice and crunchy and, mm -hmm. and stuffed. Nice and, and chubby. Lots of meat. Lots of meat. It's crunchy. It's fresh. <laughs> good. Well, looks so, so nice. I have them laid out like that separately because you don't want to stack them one on top of the other and then it'll flatten. Well, tomorrow is, well, this weekend, Sunday actually, is my uh, father in law's birthday. Birthday. And uh, tomorrow we're actually celebrating it. And everybody loves my empanadas. So I said, I'll make empanadas. And I guess we're going to take half of it because tomorrow's breakfast. Lunch. So I don't even breakfast, make lunch, and dinner. Those will be my breakfast. Those will be my lunch. <laughs> and then those and ones are the for party. the snacks. Those are for the snacks in between. Yes, I ha I always have fun making empanadas because it's it's uh, something that I I like to make and I know I'm good at making. So so anyways, I hope you enjoy the video. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I if you have any questions or comments, just comment below. And I hope you try the way I make them and if if you do post it po post it on my Instagram my Instagram is um, attached to the description in my YouTube send it to me and hopefully I'll post it on MT family Instagram thanks for watching like it like and subscribe. it subscribe yes
And leave a comment. And leave a comment. And share. And turn on your post notifications. And love me. Now you're asking for too much. <laughs>